All of the problems I work through in my videos can be downloaded from accountingworkbook.com. If you'd like a copy for yourself, just click the PDF link and you can download a copy to your computer. Also found on the website are links to all of my accounting videos, not just the ones here on YouTube that are publicly listed. They're also members only videos. About 40% of my videos are free and open. The other 60% are for members. If you click one of the members links, it'll take you to a page that looks like this, says members only content. If you'd like access to that content, just hit the join button. Okay, let's jump into the problem. Let's examine problem eight for a, a labor budget. So this is another one that uses production budget as the driver. So if I know how many units I got to make of whatever it is that I make, I can figure out my staffing needs. This is just about employees, right? If I know, you know, if you are the owner of a McDonald's and you know you're going to have a thousand customers, you know how many people you need to staff. And if you know, oh, actually, we're only going to have 400 customers, you're going to need fewer people. And so this is just a people budgeting exercise. So let's go through it. McCluskey Company production, McCluskey Company's production requirements are as follows. Units to be produced, five, six, and 7,000. Each unit requires two direct labor hours to produce and workers are paid 15 bucks an hour okay very straightforward situation uh assuming a flexible labor force how much is this going to cost us okay you can do this uh many ways but let's just start with a title as we always do mccloskey company uh direct labor budget by the way we've just done a materials budget we're doing a labor budget guess what's next overhead material labor and overhead pretty important concepts in this course and uh, the budgeting is no exception and anyway this is for the quarter ended uh, March 31st okay so uh, we'll start with our units to be produced, our required production. Now, when I test this, oops, I forgot the title line. When I test this, uh, if a student wrote units to be produced, I'd mark them right. That's absolutely true. So uh, in my class, you don't need to match my wordings exactly. And I imagine most profs will be somewhat lenient here, although it's worth asking your professor if i wrote this would you mark me right or would you mark me wrong but in my class i'm not too picky as long as you're doing the right thing with the budget you might use a different phrase than i i use so anyway uh, our required production for january is five thousand for february six thousand for march seven thousand and for the quarter 18,000. Okay, uh, it takes two hours. So uh, time per unit, two, <laughs> two hours, two hours, two hours, two hours. Direct labor hours needed. 5,000 times 2, 10,000 hours. 6,000 times 2, 12,000 hours. 7,000 times 2, 14,000 hours. And 18,000 times 2, uh, 36,000 hours. So as soon as I know this, right, I know how many people I need. If they work an eight-hour day, and there's this many days in a quarter, 90 days in a quarter, okay, and this is how many humans you need to hire but we also can determine our cost cost per hour 15 right it's 15 dollars per hour so the total direct labor cost 10,000 times 15 it's uh 150,000 dollars 12,000 times 15, 180,000 dollars. 14,000 times 15, 210,000 dollars. Uh, 150 plus 180 plus 210. 
can't do it in my head. 150 plus 180 plus 210, $540,000. That is my direct labor budget. That's how much I expect to spend on my direct labor workforce. And again, it, it helps you with planning, you know, if we need to hire new people or if we need to, uh, uh, yeah, if we're going to have a labor shortage, right? This this helps us to plan ahead on our hiring decisions. And, and certainly financially, it helps us budget because we know, okay, we've got to pay these bills. Like this is a cost to us and we'll have to pay it. Now, this is the scenario where our, our labor budget is flexible. There are other environments where it's not flexible. So it doesn't matter if we... Uh, want to bring in more employees maybe you know it's it's a tight labor market right now as i record this video i might want to bring in new employees but i can't and so i end up having to pay my current employees overtime because i can't hire it's difficult to hire or it might be a union environment where I'm, maybe i'm not able to hire because there's some restrictive policies around hiring or or firing right uh, that could be the case so let's read on to a more restricted environment Refer to the original data. Assume that the company has permanent employees who are guaranteed to be paid for at least 11500 of work per month. If production requires less than 11500 they get paid for 11500 anyway. Any amount of work above 11500 will be paid at 1.5 times their normal hourly rate. We got to pay overtime, right? That's what overtime looks like. Okay, so same situation. We're going to do a new version here. Same company name, McCluskey Company. I spell this right, McCluskey Company. This is a direct labor budget. And this is like part B of the question, right? We're doing sort of a, a second version of it. For the quarter ended March 31st. Now, truly, the top half of the budget is identical to the one above. And I'm going to just start now. If we were asked to do this from scratch, we would start at the top. But I'm going to start right here. Direct labor hours needed is the same under either circumstance. So let's start there. DL hours needed. And our direct labor hours needed. Oops. Let's move this down a line. Came in too high. I forgot to put my months. January. Feb. March and quarter goes over behind my head. Okay, so our direct labor hours needed 10,000, 12,000, 14,000, and in total 36,000. These are all hours. Okay, so in the month, where I uh, have 10,000 hours, according to the question, I got to pay 11,500 anyway. In the months where I pay, I have 12,000 and 14,000 hours, I got to pay 11,500 at regular rates and I got to pay a little extra of overtime. So let's just do a little regular hours paid. And unfortunately for me, in this month, I got to pay 11,500 regular hours anyway. And these guys, 11,500 regular hours, 11,500 regular hours, 11,500 times three is 33. Oh, let's just do the math with our calculator. 11,500 times three, 34,500 hours at regular time. Uh, and the regular cost is $15 an hour. So uh, that's the regular cost per hour. The regular DL cost then for standard work, 11,500 times 15, 172. 500, 172, 500, 172, 500, and 34, 5 times 15, 517, 500. Now we also have overtime. 
overtime hours paid. And in the first month, there's no overtime. But in February, there's 500 hours of overtime. And in March, there's 2,500 hours of overtime. The rate for overtime is 15 times 1.5 to get 50% extra pay. So it's times 2250. That's what we pay for overtime. This was 3,000 overtime hours in total times 2250. Sorry, I know I'm writing behind my head there, I imagine. Uh, so our overtime cost, uh, zero, 500 times 2250 is 11,250, 2500 times 2250, 56, 250, uh, 3,000 times 2250, 67,500. And so now we know our total labor cost, right? We have our uh, regular hours, we got our overtime hours, our total DL cost, uh, with our regular plus our overtime for January. It's 172,500, it's all just the regular time. 172,500 plus 11,250 gives us 183,750 for February. For March, 172,500 plus uh, 56,250 gives us 228,750. And last but not least, the total 517,500 is our regular cost plus 67,500. 585 thousand dollars we need underlines here and double underlines here dollar signs as well dollar signs start with this fifteen dollars kind of work our way down so at this point just something to point out our flexible workforce with no overtime was 540 for the same work that our less flexible work time was 585. Not making any sort of social commentary, just an observation on the answer. Uh, okay, there we have it. We have solved the McCluskey Company direct labor budget, both with a flexible workforce and a more rigid, inflexible workforce. And it's just like solving a puzzle, right? It's just putting in the calculations and figuring out what the costs will be. Now, again, if you're running the company, you make lots of decisions around hiring, around maybe laying people off potentially, or just contemplating your workforce costs here is a useful tool in your toolkit. That's all for this video. See you in the next one.